Hey, what's up? Welcome or welcome back. If you're new, my name is Lena, aka Frumpy Fit. I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today, I can't believe I haven't made this video sooner. We're talking about my top five calorie tracking mistakes. Now, my most viewed video on this channel is at like over a million views and it's about how to calculate your calories. But once you have that calorie calculation number and you have an idea of how much you should be eating, that doesn't do anything unless you can accurately track your food. It's literally so important and people make so many mistakes. I also wanna add that I know that calorie tracking can be very challenging. It can feel very frustrating. There is a learning curve to it, but if you can avoid some of the mistakes that I'm gonna make and track calories in a more intentional and effective way, it makes the whole entire process like a million times easier. But before we dive into those mistakes, I have one question for you. Have you tried Built Puffs yet? This video is sponsored by Built, my all-time favorite protein bar company. And I say that now rather than my all-time favorite protein bar because they have multiple bar options now. And Puffs is my favorite by far even though all of them are good. Built is known for creating protein bars that taste like candy bars instead of protein bars with incredible amounts of protein versus lower calories, which I don't even know how they do it. But this, this coconut puffs, it's covered in real chocolate on the outside. It's got coconut flavored marshmallow type consistency on the inside. It's literally like my dream candy bar, except this has 17 grams of protein, all for 140 calories, what? And if coconut's not really your jam, they also have banana cream pie and churro, super cinnamony. This is my second fave. Just head to Built's website and check out their flavor options because it's mind boggling how many flavors and different types of things that they have. If you're not quite sure what you wanna go with, I would recommend getting a mix box, either of the puffs, highly recommend the puffs or the regular mix box because you get a little bit of everything. You get to see what you really like. So if you want to try them or restock, you can use the link in the description and use this discount code to get you 15% off. Thanks Bill for sponsoring this video. All right. Mistake number one is that you're obsessing too much about the numbers. You might feel like that's obvious or you might be like, um, duh, like I'm counting calories. Like the numbers are all that matters, but let me shed some light here. This mistake is twofold. The first is that you get so focused on the numbers that you completely ignore any signals that are coming from your body. And I'll use myself as an example. I have done two bodybuilding competitions. The second one did involve me tracking my food. And then I've done some calorie tracking on my own terms outside of like contest prep. And when I say I competed in a bodybuilding competition, I'm talking about like 2018, okay? It was a while ago. But I remember, I distinctly remember having this feeling of sometimes I would get to the end of the day and I would have more calories that I needed to eat, but like I wasn't actually hungry. And it felt like I was forcing myself to eat just for the sake of the numbers. And then on the other side, especially, especially when I'm PMSing, wow, I would get to the end of the day having eaten all of my calories and like I'm starving. And then I feel like I have to force myself not to eat just for the sake of like hitting the numbers or sticking to my goals. I literally during, this is during my contest prep. So like, obviously I don't recommend this for anybody and I don't even recommend it for myself, but it was contest prep. So it was a little bit of a different story. I like, Put that on myself because that's a very extreme side to all of this. I cried. I cried because I was PMSing, obviously, a little bit more emotional than usual, but I, was, it, I wasn't even necessarily hungry. I was just like craving something sweet. I cried and then I went to the gas station and got like a diet Sprite. Yeah, not my, not my best moment. And so you might be like, okay, well, if I do listen to my hunger signals or like what my body's asking for versus hitting the numbers, like then I'm not gonna reach my goals. Like the number is the number and I need to hit it if I'm gonna lose the weight that I wanna lose. And like kind of, but also not really. When you calculate your calories, like if you used my, I guess semi-viral calorie calculation video to calculate your calories, what you have to understand is it's not meant to be an exact science. And that number that you came with, came with, came up with is an average. Like you calculate, you use an activity factor to figure out how much exercise you're doing and how many calories you burn every day. But if you'll notice the activity factor categories are like exercising three to five times a week, which means you're burning more calories some days than others. And so what are, what the calculations do and what these equations do is they average them. So your calorie deficit is going to fluctuate over the week because you don't burn the same amount of calories every day, most likely. So it's normal for like hitting a specific calorie number 
number not to feel like it's fulfilling your needs every single day. And that point's actually gonna bring me to the next fold of this mistake. But first I need to wrap up this one, which is when you ignore your hunger signals, anything else besides the numbers, that also includes like not really even paying attention to the food you're eating and like internalizing that and helping calorie tracking teach you about food. Like that's a huge benefit of calorie tracking that most people don't even think about. If you're just like completely checked out and only focus on the numbers the entire time you're calorie tracking, you're gonna stop tracking and feel like you have absolutely no idea what to do. And you're gonna feel dependent on tracking every single thing you put in your mouth and you're gonna feel miserable and stuck. When you have a little bit more awareness while you're doing this calorie tracking thing, it makes transitioning away from it a little bit easier. A lot of it easier actually. And so the next fold of this goes back to like that number that you've calculated not meeting your needs every single day. I think a mistake is trying to hit at that number exactly. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can kind of mitigate this and add a little bit more flexibility to calorie tracking. There's something called calorie cycling, which Jordan Syatt talks about a lot. I think he has a YouTube video about it. So maybe go check that out. But essentially you can add up those calories every single day into the week and divide them over the week to make give you a little bit more flexibility like I think a very common calorie cycling protocol is to eat lower amounts of calories. My husband just texted me noise in response to me adding yogurt to our grocery pickup order. <laughs> That's what I get for filming with my phone. A typical calorie cycling protocol is eating fewer calories on weekdays and a little bit more on the weekends because a lot of us have a nine to five Monday through Friday and it's easier to stick to a lower amount of calories. Maybe because you're not going out to eat with friends, you're not doing social things, you don't have as much time in your day to be sitting there like thinking about food as much. At least that, that was my experience when I worked a Monday through Friday, nine to five. Now I work from home and it's like every day the kitchen is like extremely close by. I think about food, I can have it. It's dangerous. That was something I had to really figure out. And I think I actually talk about that in my work from home tips video a little bit. So that's one way to add some flexibility back in and not obsess over hitting an exact number that's not even really meeting your needs anyway. Or you can follow my preferred method and what I used with my one-on-one -on -one clients when I had them and what I recommend to my course students now that I have my course. If you wanna learn about it and get the free training that comes with it, you can actually use the link that's in the description and pinned in the comments. It's called Tried and True Weight Loss for You. But what I teach is using a calorie range. So essentially you figure out like different levels of a deficit. So let's say like 250 calorie deficit to like a 500 calorie deficit. That's a range of calories. And no matter where you eat in that range, you're in a calorie deficit. It just will slightly impact your rate of weight loss, which you can factor in. So if even if you are going more aggressive, let's say your calorie deficit could be between 500 and 750. So that's a larger deficit, but you still have that 250 calorie buffer. So you're not like freaking out about needing to hit an exact number and getting to listen to your hunger and all of those other things is built in because if one day you're more hungry, you have more calories to play with. If one day you're less hungry, just eat a little bit less, but still within that calorie range. And I know this might feel counterintuitive, especially because like calorie tracking apps tend to be like so obsessed with like perfection. Like I'm talking to you, my fitness pal, where like it'll set a goal for you. And if you don't hit it, it'll like freak out and tell you like, you have to eat this many calories left for the day or like you've gone over your calories, like panic. You're gonna like not ever reach your goals. I know it doesn't say stuff like that, but that's sometimes how it feels. But you tell that calorie tracker app who's boss and you just do your own thing. I've also been wanting to tell you guys, I just found out about a tracking app and I just finished testing it out to make sure I was comfortable recommending it to you guys, but it's called Macro Factor. I know we're tracking, talking about tracking calories, but this Macro Factor app will work for that. I know because I tried it and it doesn't freak out. It doesn't give any indication that you did anything wrong if you go above or below your calories. The guy who created it, Greg Nuggles, I'm a fangirl, honestly. He is an absolute genius, which is why I kind of knew before I even tested it that this app was gonna be amazing. He told me, he DM'd me, that's why I fangirled. He told me that they did that intentionally. They don't ever want that psychological like pressure or anything that might make you feel like you made a mistake, which is like, like props to him and his team. Also F you, my fitness pal. <laughs> and the really cool thing about his app is that it gives you a recommendation and they use the latest science. They've spent like a really long time figuring out how to give really accurate recommendations for calories and macros. Like 
when it gave me its recommendation for me after I plugged in all my information, I was like, whoa, that's probably exactly what I would have calculated for myself versus my fitness pal. I told you in, I usually said in a recent video, never ever, I have never once seen my fitness pal give a good recommendation for how many calories somebody should be eating. But the cool thing about Macro Factor is it adjusts as you go. It's recommendations for how many calories you should be eating adjust as you're logging stuff in. So if you eat a little bit more or a little bit less, it just takes that into consideration. No big deal, no pressure. It also will base that off of your weight as you log it in so that it ensures that you're actually gonna make progress as well. It's really freaking cool. I'm obsessed with it obsessed with everything that Greg does. I'll add his Instagram below and his website, Stronger by Science, because they put out so much free, like hardcore scientific information. So if you're kind of on the nerdier side, you're gonna be obsessed like I am. I know I'm rambling, so let me wrap it up. It is a paid app because it's essentially replacing having a diet coach, not to mention the fact that like the tracking aspect of the app is a million times better than any other app out there. So if you wanna try it, I'll include the link in the description. I do have an affiliate code, so I get a little small commission if you decide to use it, if you decide to pay for it, but my code will get you a 14 day free trial. So literally no pressure, try it out, see if you feel like it might be for you. The second mistake that I always see people make when it comes to calorie tracking is that they go too low with their calories, uh, whether they're listening to my fitness pal, they used my calculator option and it gave them really low calories and they're just like, okay, this is what it is and this is how much I have to eat if I wanna lose weight. You should never, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, you should never go below your BMR. In all the time that I worked with clients and with my hundreds of course students, I'm like, do not ever go below your BMR if you can avoid it. And I feel like most of the time that you can. If you're petite, as in like short, this does become a little bit more challenging. And so you really have to focus on increasing your daily activity if you're finding yourself in that position of it being challenging to stay above your BMR and still be in a deficit. But I talked about in like my weight loss plateaus video, if you wanna check that out, about metabolic adaptation. And if you take your calories too low, your body's not gonna dig that. Your metabolism may adapt and burn even fewer calories than it was and make weight loss even more challenging and very unhealthy. So as a general rule of thumb, I feel like not going below your BMR is a safe bet. Rather than giving somebody like, oh, you shouldn't go below 1200. Well, everybody has different caloric needs. So 1200 could be not that much below their BMR for someone or like super below their BMR for somebody else. So I think that's why BMR is a good solid recommendation and general rule of thumb because it tends to be custom to you because it's based on your height, weight, age, etc. So whether you're using something like my fitness pal or macro factor which of course like I mentioned, it's gonna be my preferred option. Do not go below your BMR, even if the app recommends it. Just because you can technically lose weight more quickly does not mean that you should. In addition to those concerns that we have for your health with going too low on your calories, not to mention the fact that the fewer calories that you eat, the less likely you are to reach your health needs in terms of like micronutrients and stuff like that for the day, also maybe protein and carbs even, it also is likely gonna push you into a situation where you're feeling very restricted and that's hard to stick to for a long term, long enough to get you results even. And that could put you in that cycle of like binging, restricting, roller coastering, yo-yo dieting, whatever you wanna call it. In my free training, the one thing you need to achieve sustainable weight loss, I call it roller coastering. And I talk all about that in that free training. So if you'd like to check that out, you can use the link in the description or pinned in the comments. But a huge reason why people are not able to maintain their weight loss results long-term is because they just went too restrictive in the beginning. And a lot of times that has to do with how many calories you were eating. It can also refer to cutting out too many of your favorite foods. It also could be over exercising, could be a lot of things, but under eating on calories is a big one. The third mistake that I see lots of people making when they are calorie tracking is just tracking their food incorrectly. And I don't mean obsessing over every single grain of rice because I would never recommend that. Again, our focus is not obsession and calorie tracking and calorie calculation in itself is not meant to be an exact science, even though try people try to like force it to be. I'm talking about simple things like tracking your meat raw versus cooked. So if you're tracking your calories, which one do you do? Do you even know which one you're tracking? Because you definitely should know, it makes a big difference. And I'll use myself as an example again. During my very first bodybuilding prep, my unhealthy one, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about it. I, felt, I followed a meal plan from a nutritionist and it was, 
yikes, it was not good. But she assigned to me in my meal plan, so we're not even talking about calorie tracking. She assigned to me four ounces of chicken breast or four ounces of 99% lean ground turkey because that was the only meat I was allowed to eat the entire time. And I would bulk prep the chicken or the turkey and cook it and then just portion it out four ounces after it was cooked. Guess what? She meant four ounces of raw and the serving size on the package, like if you were to get a pound of ground turkey or like a packet of chicken breast or something like that, four ounces is a serving size normally and they mean raw. And to me, I was like, why? Like nobody is out here eating raw chicken. Like why would you say that? And I think there are multiple reasons. Like everyone cooks it differently, which may impact weight at the end. Measuring it raw is a much more accurate way to measure it. But how annoying is that to like, have to measure things like raw and then convert it into like a cooked weight. And what I found is that with ground turkey or chicken, there was an ounce of difference between the weights when I cooked it because I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to use like sauce or oil or anything like that. It was torture. So what I found was if I'm making four ounces of raw ground turkey, it ends up about three ounces after I'm done cooking it. So I was just over here eating an extra ounce or however, I don't wanna do any conversions. I was eating a bunch of extra of those meats without even knowing it. And so I'm not telling you that you have to make sure you're measuring everything out raw, because like I said, it's kind of an inconvenience sometimes. There are smart ways to do it. You could measure the raw weight and then measure the cooked weight, and depending on how you cook it, and then kind of do some conversions and plug it in there and have it still be semi-accurate. Or you can just find the cooked listing. I did this with Macro Factor when I was testing it out for you guys. I know that this works in my fitness pal. You would type in like chicken breasts cooked and it might ask like, or it might give you options. Like was it baked? Was it blah, blah, blah. If you are cooking with oil, it might be a good idea to add that oil in also, but search a cooked option and log it that way. It'll be much more accurate. It'll save you a lot of frustration. On the flip side, this also can happen with dry ingredients like rice or pasta, rice is gonna soak up the water as it's cooking and actually be heavier once it's cooked. So it's kind of the opposite of the meat. Meat shrinks when, as it's cooking and rice or pasta expands because it's soaking up all that water. So that's another thing. You might be logging stuff in and it just being totally off. There are other tracking mistakes like just eyeballing stuff. If you've ever seen the comparison of like a, a actual measured tablespoon of peanut butter and then what people, scoop out and just assume it's a tablespoon. It can be quite a big difference because peanut butter is rather caloric, little things like that, or just not measuring your sauces. There are a lot of things that could lead to inaccurate tracking that would be easy to track if you just knew how to do it the right way and how to do it easily. So I'm not saying obsess over every grain of rice. I'm just saying it by correcting these little tiny simple mistakes, like searching the cooked entry versus the raw entry for your meat, solve a lot of issues for you. The fourth mistake that I see people making when they're tracking their calories is avoiding situations that are challenging to track. Now I get it, tracking your calories can be very frustrating just at home trying to do it with your own recipes, your own cooking or scanning barcodes of your food. And so to add on like an even more challenging situation like a restaurant that doesn't have a menu with caloric information or eating out at a friend's house and not knowing the portions that they're using for their recipes or something like you're eating crackers and cheese with friends and family and like you have the package of the cheese and the crackers so you could log it in but you don't know the exact weights because you don't want to like pull out your food scale and be like that person. Situations like that. I think it's a mistake to avoid those kinds of situations because those types of situations can really help you practice getting away from calorie tracking eventually because I don't think you should necessarily even track your calories as long as it takes you to reach your goal. I think that the purpose of calorie tracking, aside from getting you closer to your goal, is teaching you about food. And if you learn as much as you can about food from calorie tracking, it's a good time to phase it out and just move towards mindful eating. It is true that a calorie deficit is required to lose weight, but calorie tracking is not required. You can still be in a calorie deficit using mindful eating. I have a whole video about mindful eating right here and then also in my course, I teach calorie tracking and mindful eating only as the diet options. And you can either do calorie tracking and transition into mindful eating, or you can just go straight to mindful eating, pass go, collect $200. So with my clients and with my students, I always say like 
this is a perfect opportunity to practice not tracking, to go into a situation, tap into those hunger signals, tap into being just more aware and intentional and not relying on the numbers and see how you do. Eyeball your portion sizes, like whatever. Practice is not meant to be perfect also, so if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. We just learn from that and try to get better for next time. And don't even bother logging it in. It's okay. It's not a big deal. This is a belief that a lot of people have about tracking is I have to track every single thing that I put in my mouth or I'm not gonna be successful. That depends on how you determine success with calorie tracking. And I do not label that as success, in my opinion. For me, success is learning about food, getting us closer to our goals and not letting it take over your entire life. And the last mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're calorie tracking is not knowing when or how to stop or transition out of it. And I have never seen anybody on social media anywhere talk about this ever. And maybe I'm just not looking in the right places, but like what do coaches and influencers who promote calorie tracking like expect you to do? Like just track your calories forever? That seems crazy. So I kind of alluded to this in previous mistakes, but I don't even necessarily think that you should be tracking as long as you need to, to fully reach your goal. I think you can learn as much as you can about food, start implementing some practice of eating without having to track it and still being successful. This and success will be determined based on like what calorie tracking is helping you with. Is it being in a deficit? Is it controlling your portion sizes? Like why? Also, that's what I would ask is like, why are you calorie tracking in the first place? Aside from your goal is to lose weight. So if you've been calorie tracking for a while, maybe ask yourself like, what am I getting out of this at this point? Am I still tracking because I'm just afraid to stop? Am I burnt out? Is it making me miserable? Is it damaging my relationship with food? Is it actually getting me to my weight loss goals? I don't necessarily think calorie tracking is for everybody either. I did this whole video about why you shouldn't track your calories. So if you're also feeling like your relationship with tracking your calories is not good, check that video out. Might be a good idea for you to step away from it. But in terms of the how of transitioning out, it's like I mentioned, we are introducing practice. So you can either do that in moments where you're in a social setting or in a situation where it might be harder to track those calories, or you can just do it on a normal day. I think normal days are actually some of the best ways to introduce practice because you can essentially just go about your usual business and it, instead of actually typing your food into the calorie tracker app, you can just go about your day and see how you feel. Use other markers to determine whether or not you think you're on track, whatever that means for you. So I think one of the most successful ways to transition out is to just start implementing those non-tracking days, those practice days, and keep adding them in or keep adding situations like that in until it feels like you can completely phase it out. You could also maybe stop cold turkey and then introduce like check-in days where you do track just to get like a, a feel or a vibe, like if you are actually hitting the numbers that you're hopefully trying to hit. But I will say that the the when you're stopping tracking calories, you should not be like tracking in your head. You should not be trying to make sure you're still hitting the right numbers. That's not any different than like putting it into an app if you're trying to keep track of it in your head. But anyway, those are my five mistakes that I always see people make when they're tracking their calories. This video was way longer than I expected as usual, but let me know what you think about these mistakes. If you're interested in checking out Macro Factor, the link is in the description and you can use my affiliate code, which will get you an extended free trial if you do wanna test it out. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here. You can also follow me on TikTok and on Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.